to raise money for this film. And they raised, I don't know, about 450000 something. Alejandro put his own money in this film. This is the, uh, excuse me, the new film. And I, I worked on it as well uh, in, uh, in Chile uh, last month. They just finished shooting. I don't know, Bennett, any, has anyone seen La Danza de la Realidad? Yeah. It was yeah. The, yeah, that was the first part of his, it's a two-part autobiographical film about his life. And the second part is called Poesia Sin Fim, which is... Uh, endless poetry. It's about his when his family moved to Santiago, and it's a very, very beautiful film. And I had the great pleasure of acting in the film, which was really a trip. Um, and uh, uh, anyway, there's an Indie Indiegogo uh, campaign on right now, and I would encourage you if you and I know you're all fans of Hodorowsky's, so if you would go to Indiegogo and look it up, and please. Uh, if you can donate, please do, and please pass it on. Please uh, email your friends, uh, um, anyone you think might be interested, because they are raising money as we speak. And uh, I just want to say that before I forgot. And it's Indiegogo, so uh, please uh, look for it. Uh, Bob, I have a question. Um, yes, sir. As you know, I did some psycho magic training with uh, Hodorowski in Chile, and. Um, Every time I watch this movie, it reads more and more like a psychomagic manual. And I see more and more exercises that we did together in this film. The more I see it, they're, they're a little more subtle in, in the film than he did later on. But can you explain to us how the psychomagic is tied to this film or any mystical uh, meanings or anything you'd like to talk about about this film? Uh, yes. Well, first of all, uh, psychomagic was written years later. And at least I never, we never talked about that in particular, but I can say that um, when I first went to Mexico City and um, began working on the film, I was just Alejandro's assistant. Uh, and, um, but he took a liking to me and uh, we became friends and he invited me to stay in, in his house in Mexico City and on the third floor he had a small, he had a, a library where there was just a bed and a table that he had uh, shelves full of every kind of metaphysical book, philo metaphysics, philosophy, um, spiritual, any anything that you could imagine um, he had. And I asked him one time if he'd really read, if he'd read some or most of those books and he said all. Uh, he's, you know, he's an incredible, he has an incredible mind, so he was always, um, you know, interested in what you see in the film, and uh, um, he's just a, a very, very spiritual and And he had, he had actually said, told me that you actually went broke at 52 years old because of Alan Klein, and he didn't even have money to eat lunch, and he had to ask his friends to borrow well, he, money. And yeah, he, he uh, called me and asked me to, uh, to he was in Paris, and uh, asked me to, to lend him money, and I sent him money the, the same day. And why uh, is it that he was left with no money okay, at well, 52 years old? Well, I, I think it was about, I believe, the, you know, I'm pretty sure. What happened was he moved to New York after the Holy Mountain, and he was living uptown in uh, Madison Avenue and he had a very beautiful apartment and uh, Alan Klein wanted him to direct the story of O. I believe that's what happened. Uh, anyway, they got into a dispute and um, Klein refused uh, to, to distribute El Topo and the Holy Mountain for 30 years. So there were only uh, you know, uh, bootleg copies, it was like a Japanese copy, and yes. you know, people just couldn't get copies of it. And it was a very, very uh, terrible thing that, that Klein did. Um, and uh, Alejandro was, un unfortunately in this situation, he was outmatched. This is not his, I mean, Klein was a very, very tough guy, and, and, he, and he did this to get, to get back at Alejandro, yeah. and it created a situation where Alejandro couldn't get funding for for a new film, and of course he went on to do many other things. He's a a master of tarot. He, he uh, lectures, teaches of the tarot. He does. Um, I don't know if anybody's seen any of his comic books. He does. He did uh, 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 the Incall, 
Yeah. Sean the Fool with, with Moebius, who I was fortunate enough to meet with, with Alejandro, and uh, his, uh, these are heavy metal, you know, comics, or they're yeah. published all over the world. He's written four novels. So he, you know, and he lectures all over the world, so he managed to survive. He's a, a real survivor, but he had a, he suffered. And then, because he couldn't make films for a long time. And they, they, they said that he said that he can't watch Santa Sangre because his son, uh, Teo, was in it and his son died? Yes, Teo died. I knew Teo. I knew all his sons. I knew his family very well. And I knew Teo. Well, I knew them all, but when I was working on Santa Sangre, Teo and I used to go work out together. He like, you know, we'd go to the gym and lift weights and stuff. And I, I spent a number of days with him and... To be honest with you, I haven't really read about it, and Alejandro would not talk about it. Yeah, he uh, he wouldn't. He will not talk about it. I don't know exactly. He doesn't what, watch the movie anymore because right. of it. it reminds yeah, him. and I, I don't know how Teo died to this day. I, I I just don't know because he would never talk about it, and I've never I've never read anything about it. I just it's just a subject that's not not discussed. And like you said, uh, you had told me that Holorowski said that you were his only true friend, right? Did I tell you that? Well, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Have. I, I guess. Well, I did tell you that. He told me that in New York at one time because when he was living in New York, I had an apartment downtown, and I actually worked on the post production as well. And um, he actually fired me on the second day of the post production. This is kind of interesting because he um, hired an actor, a voiceover actor, to do the voice of the master. And I won't mention his name. I mean, I'm sure he's gone by now. He was a very nice man, and he had a very big voice. Kind of, you know, stentorian, is that the word? You know, big, a very big voice. But he didn't know what the hell he was reading. He didn't understand the film at all. And I could tell that, but I guess Alejandro, it wasn't his first language. And so the second day, uh, they were doing the voiceover. He was doing the master in, in New York, and I... I said to Alejandro, I said, and I believe his wife Valerie was there. She played uh, Cell, you know, the, 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 toy man, the toy manufacturer. And oh, by the way, that's a, um, that character was based on Eva Peron. Uh, so at any rate, um, uh, the second day he was recording with this man, uh, and I said to him, I said, are you really going to use him? Well, Alejandro has a very a bad temper. He just threw me. He threw me out. He fired me. I mean, I was a producer at that point. He fired me. Threw me out. And I went back down. And I felt terrible. About a week later, he called me. And he said, "Teicher, he called me. Teicher, Teicher, please come back. I'm sorry." And he fired the guy and did the voice, the voice of the master himself. And that's a, that's a true story. Any other questions? Um, anyone? Any questions? Anyone? Anyone over there? How long did it take to shoot the film? Um, the film was done in about, uh, you know, it's been a long time. I think it was about nine, well, we had a four-week delay, but I think film shooting was about nine weeks. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Might have been a little, um, it was a long time ago. That Might have been <laughs> ten, but it was something uh, along those lines. That one over here. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I'm sure you've had plenty of people come to you and give their kind of take or when they're really just away from, uh, from the movie and share that interesting story. Uh, I want to ask, like, out of everything that we've heard from you, of course, you've given me comments, which, which story or which encounter of this stuff with you, which do you find to be a very interesting one? Uh, you mean in terms of the question was who may have commented with who had the most interesting yeah, like, out of all the feedback yeah that's a very interesting question i was just talking about this the other day funny enough because i have a friend in marin county north of san francisco who was friendly with marty ballon from jefferson airplane and i went we went to his house one night and uh, i didn't know him very well i mean i didn't really know I'd met, i just met him and I, I honestly i can't even it's been so long ago but marty ballon had probably the most incisive comments about the Holy Mountain. I remember it at the time. Uh, I, if I tried to tell you now what he did, it's a long time ago. But that's, that's, I was just telling that to somebody the other day. He, he's really, really bright and he had some very interesting comments. I'm trying to think who else, but I, it just escapes me at the moment. But that came to mind though just recently for some reason. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. I'm sorry? What is Alejandro's favorite part in the movie? Of, 
of and the, why? Of the, 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 this one? Yeah. What, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think, I don't think uh, we ever, I ever asked, I don't think you ever said, I've ne I've, it's an interesting question, I, I, I really don't know. What message did Holy Roski leave with you? Sorry? What message did Holy Roski leave with you? She said, what message did Holy Roski leave with you? What message did he leave with me? Just in general? Or with from the movie? Or as far as the, as the experiences that you've had with him? <clears throat> well, I'd have to say that... You know, working with him and knowing him was the, probably one of the most formative things in my life. Maybe the most. Uh, he's he's a, uh, he's a in my mind he's a giant in in terms of well, first creatively as a filmmaker, um, and it re it really pains me because I live in Los Angeles most of the time and I'm involved in in film myself. I've made a few films since this, and a lot of people don't even know who he is, but the people who do really love him. Um, Honestly, well, working with him was, was in, has been an incredible. I've worked on four films with him, including this last one, the one in, uh, that just finished uh, just a few days ago. Um, and but I, I would have to say, knowing him and spending time with him was even more important for me. Uh, he's just an he's just an incredible man, and. Um, He's very, very, very smart, and he's also very funny, and uh, just, I loved working with him, but even more just getting to know him and just being 